Okay. We, we did, it did a weird live. thing. We are live. We are live. This is. Am I right? Yeah, it did a weird thing because because it's scheduled. Uh huh. Even though I hit the the start streaming. Yeah. It didn't actually put that through until it was five o'clock for their time. Are we live now? We're live now. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Live on Two Wheels, Episode 9. I am your host, Chase on Two Wheels. That is my friend, Bo. He is my co-host for Live on Two Wheels. Hypothetically, we are live, and you can hear us, and everything is hunky-dory. Yeah. Let me fix that. I'm also recording. You're also... <laughs> oh, you reminded me. Thank you, Bo. Guys, everybody in the chat, how are you guys doing? Uh, so I want everybody... To uh oh wait am I gonna mess that up no I'm not so guys uh I don't know if you guys watch uh, or listen to the podcast this is a good segue this is actually uh, also available in audio form uh, you're currently watching us live but you might be listening to us on Apple Podcast I don't know on Spotify maybe on Google Podcasts nobody's listening on Google Podcasts but it's available um and if you find yourself to be one of those people that is listening to us, last episode might have sounded slightly different. Bo, tell everybody why it sounded slightly differently. I don't want to. You have to. I am forcing you to. You have to. You have to tell people. All right. Well, we have a roadcaster, uh, a road po- podcast, a roadcaster. Pro. It's a big sound thing. All right. And this is where we record everything. And last time was the first time that I had been... That's true. It was your first time, but what happened? I forgot to I forgot to hit record. My friends, there is a giant green glowing button on that record that sound device. And when we got done last week with the stream, I looked over at Bo and I was like, all right, man, you can hit that record button. We're good. And I looked over and it was green, meaning it hadn't been recording the whole time. (laughs) Yeah, well. It's okay. Luckily, we were able to pull the stream down. The audio sounded great. I don't even think people are going to notice. Well, now they know. But you guys now know. (laughs) So, everybody, give Bo a pat on the back in the chat. No, I don't want your pa- patronizing <laughs> behaviors. Uh, Heather says she didn't even know. So, and you can ask Heather when I Heather's my wife. Uh, when we got home, I was so what she's saying, and they say like, shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but it's all good. Uh, the podcast sounded fine. Uh, it, nobody's going to know, realistically. <laughs> I just thought it was funny and wanted to give Bo shit about it. You were, so you were that- just tired of being the one screwing up yeah yeah i'm glad that i'm sharing the responsibility now uh oh also this podcast and show are brought to you by tana it's a cool motorcycle app you can download it in the link down below and we will talk about them later thank you tana for sponsoring this show um so yes i wanted to share i I love sharing the uh, royal wee's responsibility so that it's not all my fault when things mess up yeah um okay we all do our part. We all do our part. So, guys, we're going to get into the house- housekeeping real quick, but uh, today's episode, we're talking about Harley. We're talking about this Pan America. If you guys have been following Live on Two Wheels since its inception, uh, our first episode, our first episode was actually about the Pan America. So, uh, we're going to talk a little more about them because Harley did their press release. Um, shocker, we weren't invited. But anyway, we'll get to that uh, later. Um, so, things to do. If you're watching this, hit the like button because we're doing it live right now. Where is it? Is it here? Where? Let me see. Well, I'm trying to look at my screen. Where am I? Right down there. It's right down there. Click that button. I love you long time. Also, uh, if you guys listen to the podcast version of this and it's on Apple Podcasts, we would love if you reviewed it. It super helps us out. And, Bo, where are we trying to get to? What? We're not trying to be the best podcast, but we're no, trying, we're trying to-, to be the... We're, we're trying to be the number two. We're, our goal is to be the number two motorcycle podcast on the internet. Uh, if you guys don't know, I'm pretty sure that High Side, Low Side from Revzilla. That sounds like a redundant statement, by the way. What? Like a podcast on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't know where to, like, here. Um, 
I think every episode I do a shout out to High Side Low Side from Revzilla. So in in this promotional platform of Not getting so people suddenly trying to get them to notice us. <laughs> notice me, Senpai. No, no, I could if I wanted to, I could get on High Side Low Side. I I, I got my contacts to Revzilla. I ain't worried about that, but I'm just saying the amount of times I say that I want us to be number two, I do so much promo for them. We're never going to beat them anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> like, I, can't, I don't promo us to get to number two if people don't know who number one is. So, like, they're the real winners here. Uh, so, what else is – what else? oh, we have a slingshot. There's that. Yeah. Uh, who is it? Polaris uh, got us a slingshot finally. Uh, Bo, you took that thing around today. How did, what, Quick, uh, first impressions of the slingshot for you. Um, I would not spend the money on it. Because it is a lot of money for a very narrow use case, kind of fun toy. But that being said, it is it is pretty fun. And you feel like a badass. So I've only taken it around the road, and I'm going to have to ride it home tonight. So I'm, I'm not lying. I'm a little nervous to go through some serious traffic with it. I'm not the oh, – we have a manual one. I made sure to get – to make sure we had a manual one. I don't know how it's going to go. If I'm really late getting home, babe, that's exactly why. I probably stalled out on the side <laughs> of the road somewhere, and I'm, I'm going to try my best to get home. Uh, so we have that here at the shop. Uh, got some cool stuff going on with basically everything we're doing right now. Uh, we're also, we have a giveaway, because we're going to do our uh, our regular RevZilla $50 gift card at the end of the show. I'm going to tell you guys how to do that, but uh, I'm going to post something in the chat real quick. Uh, we actually are doing a giveaway for a Pack Talk Black, which is this device. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Um, basically, it's the best communication device on for motorcycle helmets out right now. Do love, do love. Everybody in the shop has one. Yeah. Um, I'm just so glad to not have to use a Senna anymore. Personally. Okay, I did two links. You guys click on that link. I think all you have to do is like follow. Uh, Cardo's YouTube page or something like that. That link will show you everything you got to do really easy, and they are phenomenal, both for audio and everything. So uh, that's the – that's that. Is there anything else that happened this week that we need to update people on? Um, me, me and Brian are going to uh, some races. Oh, yeah, you're yeah, going to can... get on Moto Fest. No, we're not. We're going to King of the Baggers. Oh, tom- oh shoot, right. Yeah, D- well, come on, man. Totally I've forgot. Been talking about I it. Totally for, like, forgot. Months. I don't get to go. Heather and I got two weddings to shoot in the next two days. All right, I'm busy. Um, yeah. So yeah, you're gonna be you're gonna be all king of the bagger mode. Anybody else in the comments in the Atlanta area gonna go to the king of the baggers? Yeah, dude. I'm so excited. Yeah. So uh, actually, you know who hooked that up? Cardo. That's right. Full full been, circle. Because they uh, are a sponsor of uh, Moto America, aren't they? Yeah, they're a sponsor of Moto America and subsequently First Rides. Mm. So how convenient. What what a what a great thing that is. Yeah, the option was was the other uh, race, the flat track or the uh, or the bagger. And I chose baggers because. Oh, so this is a good uh, thing I meant to tell you earlier. I'm glad that you chose the baggers because you guys are actually going to a flat track race on Get On Moto Fest. <laughs> so you'd have done two flat tracker races. So yeah. I'm glad you chose the king of the baggers. Yeah. Um, so, oh, God, my laptop's going to die. Oh, snap. Why is it not plugged in, you noodle? Uh, great question. I need another question. What the hell? It's because of your, Final Cut. Where's your power cable? Oh, no. This is this is now interesting. Okay, Bo, talk for a second. I, uh, what? I'm so confused as to why you're operating without a damn power cable. Look, I've got one. I've got a power that does not that does not tell me anything. Oh, Dave McMaster's is in for like five minutes. So yeah, he's he's leaving. Live <laughs> stream catastrophe where where Chase's computer. Thankfully his computer's not in charge of this. Alright guys, don't worry. I think I've got it figured out. Are you about to do what I think you're about to do? You dingus. Alright guys. This is a what wait. Wait. Get the slack right first. Hold on, I got it. We're getting it figured out. Oh my god, if that if that fucking comes back and like yanks your laptop five feet behind you, I swear to Christ. Oh no. Okay. 
Problem solved, baby. That's that's the job. Problem solver on two wheels here. Oh my god, I have so many things coming out of this laptop now. This is terrifying. I've, I've got uh, some particularly interesting news in that my computer is doing that thing it was doing earlier when the mouse is not responding. So I am hands off right now. Uh oh. I freaking hate this Mac Mini. So the good news is you can do camera switching. I can do camera switching. Okay. Um, everything else is kind of hit or miss. Huh. So you see what, what it's doing? Oh God, guys, hold on. Yeah. It might be it might be a crazy stream. Uh oh. No, you just go. Keep keep going. Let's let's okay. get this show on the road. I'll just... I'll do my part. Oh God. <laughs> okay, uh where are we at? We got the Cardo thing, we got the sponsorship thing, we got the slingshot. Um I think that's everything. I think we can just go full on uh into the Pan America. Okay. So, um, let's let's do it. Let's get into this thing. Uh, so, guys, episode one of Live on Two Wheels, your weekly motorcycle live show here on YouTube and then subsequently on Apple Podcasts and other podcast platforms afterwards. Uh, our first episode, we talked about, um, oh, I just remembered, next, next week, next week, we are here on Friday. We are not here on Thursday next week. It is only next week. We are pushing back to Friday because boop, boop, uh, Heather and I's fourth wedding anniversary is on Thursday. Meow. So we will be doing things, uh, and you guys will not be. We will not be live streaming those things. So uh, that's what's going on next week. It's only going to be uh, for next week. Then we're back to Thursdays. Uh, we'll see how Friday goes. It'll be pretty cool. Yeah, and then, uh, I'm pretty excited to see we can. End the week on a stream. I'm interested to see how that'll go. Um, we need a bow for a start on cruiser. <sighs> Not going to deny that. Okay, that was our last thing. I just saw it in my notes. Okay, so. Okay, so before we get this started, oh I, the, the thing that I was going to tell you earlier about the the name of Pan America, this is just a fun. A, oh, a yeah, fun you were going to tell me something and then didn't. Yeah, fun little nod. Uh, do you know why it's called the Pan America? Because it. Panders to Americans. Oh my god! Um, nailed it. Totally. So nailed it. it's kind of a it's kind of a play on on words. Uh, Pan American uh, is like pertaining to the, like North and South Amer America, right? So long distance traveling, blah blah blah, adventure. But oh. it's also a nod to the Panhead, which is like they're like it's the most like one of the most iconic Panheads and Knuckleheads are the most iconic. Oh, uh, you old Knuckleheads. You knuckleheads, right, well, you. you're welcome. All right, thanks. Well, now, hey, his history lesson with Bo. If this is an edit, I'd make Bo put something up here like history lessons with Bo. No. I'm not going to make him do that. I but I wouldn't do it anyway. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, Harley, the company that you know as an American motorcycle maker that makes cruisers and has a, uh, a very inclusive uh, feel for their uh, motorcycle brand, have created an adventure motorcycle. It is called the Pan America. And it speculations are done now. People are getting them. Speculations are done. The first episode because this is nine weeks ago. Wow, can you believe that? We've almost made it to double digit episodes. What a what a crazy world. Wait, um, <laughs> wait, what? I had to do the applause. Oh God, we still need a way for me to hear things so I know when you do stupid applause. Oh, if only I had a way for you to put headphones in and listen to, but you refused. I do refuse to wear headphones on this podcast <laughs> uh, or on the show. So uh, on episode one, it was all speculation. It was about to come out. We knew what it was going to look like, but we didn't know anything about it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are in the future now and the bike has come out. The press launch has happened. The test rides have happened. We were not invited. I could not think of any reason why we were not invited to not a press Not one launch. single reason. I... Not one single freaking reason. <laughs> um, so, if you guys don't know, a lot of you pro guys probably do, I've been a little critical on Harley, mostly because of their culture. The experience that you've had. Mostly because of my one-on-one -on -one experience with 
Harley dealerships in Georgia in the suburbs. In Let's Georgia, just be specific. In, yeah, <laughs> yes. Okay. So all of that is true, but I have not had a good experience. And I have judged Harley as a brand because of that experience. I have never ridden a Harley, but everybody knows when I crap on them, I crap on the brand, not the machine. Everybody else craps on the machine. <laughs> right? I mean, the, there is... It's fair? There are two types of people in this world. Oh, God. Uh, and a, this and whole a, world. <laughs> and a third that is kind of an outlier. But there are people who absolutely love Harleys more than anything in the world, no matter what they do. Right. And people who don't give a flying F about Harleys. So I'm and then the there's third? other people that's like, like me, I like motorcycles. And if you make a good motorcycle and your brand isn't toxic or, uh, you know, like the big thing with Harley is... You know, they don't care about what the customer thinks and blah. There's this, you know, stigma that surrounds them as a brand where it's like expensive, name only, lifestyle, blah, blah, blah. But if you make a great bike and and you do good things with your marketing and you kind of reach out to people in a a more, you know, relatable way. Right. I'm going to ride it. Period. See, that's so I don't care what brand it is. Yeah. So I I'm bike agnostic i don't care what the brand is i don't care what the bike is i my job the way i look at my job is it unless i am it's under 300 cc's huh unless it's under 300 cc's well no i've ridden a 250 and liked it. i ride a 250 every day and like it so you can't the say su- that the sumo doesn't count so you can't tell me that a one motorcycle doesn't count that one doesn't count. that's <sighs> lies you anyway crap on t all the time i look at my job <laughs> right my like if we look at the whole channel i look at my job as I am here to translate experiences to people. Mm-hmm. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Like generally, so I don't care what the make is. I get I get told that I'm a, a Yamaha fanboy. I get told that I'm a Ducati fanboy. Uh, I get told that I'm a Jake the Garden Snake fa- uh, fanboy. Sorry, I just saw the checkmark <laughs> name pop up. Um, so I I just you know I translate that, which I feel like this is the entire reason why Harley really freaking missed out. Well, so. Here's the thing, and Jake brought up a good point. Oh, what, hold up. Yeah, go ahead. So, and I said this, I was talking to Blockhead. I was like, they could they could have easily used an existing motor. They took a motor, I think the Revolution Max is a, a variation on something they already had, but it's very updated. And to be clear, really, the Revolution Max is the 1200cc engine that's in the Pan American. Right. Got it. And it is a derivative of something else that they had, uh, and then they just re like completely from the ground up reworked it for this, and it's the next it's the next Evo motor is what it is, the next big new motor. What is an Evo motor? <clears throat> it was like it was like one of the biggest changes in motor design that Harley made, and that was like the not the this last uh, five years, but before that, and all the bikes had the Evo motor in them. And so you're they, saying this is like the next big. So then they went to the Milwaukee making. Eight, which is a head cooled, a liquid head cooled, air cooled hybrid motor. Mm-hmm. And so the only air cooled motor now left is the um, Sportster. That's the only like true Harley engine. Right. Um, this motor. Here's why I like it. I don't give a crap if the. Um, if the Pan America does well, and I don't think they do either. Just as a bike? As a bike. Okay. I think I think they are considering this, if they make any money on it, good. But what this is, is R&D into modernizing their, their platform so right. that they can update all of their bikes that are remaining. The Sportsters. All of the Sportsters. I think this, this Revolution Max is going to go into all the Sportsters to bring it up. And I like that because... It shows that they can do something a little bit different. We were talking about this. Remember when like Yamaha did the Nikon, right? Yeah. And yeah, we're yeah. like, why? Well, just because. Just it was to, like f boy money. Yeah, and it was like, here's some like real world R and D. Let's see what we can do. You know, this bike, if it does well, good. They can make some of their money back. But but all of the technology that's going into this bike can then propagate to the rest of their brand. Well, do you think it's R and D? On a 
consumer level or do you think it's R and D on a, what are we physically able to do level? Because like if it's what we're physically able to do, there's no point in putting it out to the public because they would just internally ride through the desert with it. It is, it is a dip your toes into modernizing the brand kind of thing. Let's see how it plays. If people are going to like it, like Harley has a history of, of, being steps behind they they used to be and, and me and brian talked about this before um they used to be the leader when it comes to innovation harley was like top of the food chain and then and they then, trimmed at the top of the stairs and, and then what they the did is down. they turned it into a lifestyle brand and and then worked on all their money went into design so right. like the fit and finishes of harley's in my opinion are some of the best like when you look at them at, 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 uh, in a totality like they're really well designed it's because the soft tail has been has had 10 years, 10 plus years of design iterations and it's it's tight. It looks great. I still think the Road Glide is like one of the coolest looking baggers on the planet. All the soft tails, when you get up close to them, they look great. So they've spent a lot of money on that. I think this is them going like other brands are offering similar things but with more modernized features and they have taken the opportunity, which is unlike them, which is why I think that this is this could be the beginning of Harley trying to like get back to that with new leadership and like a new CEO and stuff saying like, you know, F it, right. like let's go back to what we are, which is the leader. All of the things they offer on this thing, and we'll get into the information about them, is a step towards that direction. And I hope they take that and go like full on because that would be cool to see yeah. competitively priced, modernized machines like you look at the Challenger and it's a modernized, it's a liquid cooled, you know, inverted forks, all that stuff. Indian has made a more modern version of the bagger. Well, what could a company that pretty much runs the bagger market do with a more modern portfolio? But it's well, just my thought. So, yeah, and we're going to get into all the specifics of uh, from what we've seen online about the Pan America. But something that I find interesting because I, I, I do feel like. The Pan America is Harley, like, let's try to slowly pivot this this giant ship we've created. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of people that ride Harleys that would be really pissed off if Harley was just like, you know what, F these cruiser things. We're just going to go make this other stuff, right? They, they try to sell too much merchandise and shit to do something like that. So I think... This is like a, a a dip of a toe into a new market, but mm -hmm. the thing I don't understand that I hope I have a good understanding of what they might be doing, but if you're going to try something out, why would you try it out in an adventure bike? Why would you not like try it out in in a bigger market? Do you think it's everybody because everybody expects them to do? Uh, this is something that will catch attention of of the industry as a whole. They'll be like because everybody would expect them to come out with a like let's just say they did this with the revolution and 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 updated all the sportsters. No 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 well, no no no. Good I'm job. talking they, they could have done a cruiser. I'm talking about they take this engine 1200 whatever, why not make a hyper naked? Well, it's a market it's a market segment that is they massive. they had a plan to do that and and took it away. The the Bronx was a, a street fighter, basically, and then they pulled it back. Uh, the word from the new CEO was the previous CEO had just overstuffed their potential, like, what we want to launch. There was, like, you know, 12 or 14 oh, new this bikes. Is, yeah, I remember this. They yeah. had, like, five different models. Yeah, and then okay. he, he said, scratch that. Let's take all of this and focus it in on a couple of bikes and make the changes we need to and try new things. And to them, the adventure bike market was more alluring than the Street Fighter market. And there also is the fact that Buell is coming back and they do – sport bikes and they're they don't want to compete with you know their their own like offspring ish kind of thing or re relative so is, is buell gonna be it does buell is it going to have anything to do with harley itself i i want to say if i read correctly it was using the, um a a buell engine that was like a harley derivative i, I have to look at the information again but yeah kind of but in a third cousin kind of way <laughs> 
Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Well, there's people in the chat saying that the adventure market is blowing up, and it. I'm not saying it's not. So the weird thing about th – this could be an our channel specific thing, but yeah. I've been talking to the guys, and I – Every time I ride an adventure bike, you guys can go watch all the first rides. I love adventure bikes. Yeah. I think I'm currently I'm I as a rider am in like that naked segment and I could tell you guys for a fact that the next segment I'm going to be moving into is adventure bikes. I don't see that happening for probably like 5 plus years, but that's definitely the eventual direction I'll be going as a rider and I think adventure bikes are phenomenal. But every time we've done a first ride video on an adventure bike, they rarely do well. So first rides in general are the best performing videos on the channel, but the adventure bikes don't really don't really hit on that. So I've been confused because like I, I do know that there are adventure bike channels that do really well. I just like it doesn't happen over here. So I'm I'm not really familiar with the entire market, but a lot of you guys are saying the adventure market is on its way to blowing up. So maybe, I mean, maybe Harley knows some stuff that we don't or that I don't, and they're trying to go ahead and get an adventure bike in the market. Because like, I I don't think I'm gonna surprise anybody and say like the naked market is has imploded, right? It's past implosion. The bikes that are in the hyper naked market are insanity. Like all the bikes, like the However, top to the bottom. However, it is starting to get oversaturated, and I think that's why the excitement is shifting. Well, also, like, can you imagine also, being Harley like the and pandemic? Man, long distance motorcycles are where it's at right now. <laughs> I mean, a motorcycling period is where it's at right now. With like, hey, six feet apart, or you can wear a helmet and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, so we should get into the specifics about this because I think that's what for me is what the most exciting part is yeah is um well we're like, we're like two minutes from ad okay. so um let's I, I have a working mouse now it's it might just be that track beds on that yay the working mouse for Bo. well also everything in here was covered in concrete and metal dust that's also a, a true fact. Yeah. Um, All right. So you, we want to go into this ad break, and then we'll talk about the specifics. Yeah, because we do need to break down all like the details of this bike real quick, and then we can further this conversation. So, guys, we're gonna jump to a Tonnet ad real quick. Uh, we'll talk about Tonnet, and then we'll be back, and we'll talk. We'll dive into the specifics about uh, this whole Pan America thing. You. Yep. See you in a second. Mm -hmm. What's going on guys? So real quick, I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to submit your questions for the live on two wheel show using the hashtag L2W. Just as a reminder, if you guys actually submit a video and we answer your question on the show, we will be sending you a $50 Revzilla gift card or one of the other prizes that we will get from one of our other sponsors. So I've got my phone recording really quickly. First up, we're going to go to the live on two wheels club over on Tonic. So once you get into there, you guys can see somebody submitted a video of their MT-07. We're going to hit this plus icon. We're going to hit the camera icon. Uh, take video. At that point, uh, we're going to be here in the app. We're going to swap places. This is me actually doing it. Hey, this is me and uh, Chase and Bo. What is your favorite motorcycle and why? Okay. And if, if we say use video, and then we go into this thing and we just say, you just... Who can who can share this post? You can put anybody. Let's do only members. Done. And at that point, I'm gonna hit a check mark. Now, I'm not gonna post it because I don't want to be selected to answer my own questions, but we want you guys to submit video questions so we can show them here on the show. And that's how easy it is to do that. So we look forward to getting some of y'all's video submissions over on Tonic. And uh, without further ado, we'll go back to the show. And we're back. Yes. Maybe. We back. Yay, we're back. Uh, Tonnet, thank you for sponsoring the show. Uh, guys, we love Tonnet, and if you are in the Americas or Canada, you should check out Tonnet, download it, and uh, follow our live on or our On Two Wheels club. Uh, also, inside of that club, at the end of the show, we're going to be picking somebody that uh, asks us a question. Use the hashtag L, the number two, and W. If it's a question, if it's a photo, it's something like that, we will pick our favorite one, and that person will get a $50 Revzilla gift card. Thank you, Tonic, for sponsoring this show. We Yay. love you long time, 
and we know secrets. Oh yeah. Did, we, did they say we can tell the secrets? I we had a tonic meeting on on Monday. I I'm gonna I'm gonna um make an executive decision and say let's not say anything right now. Okay. Because you get in trouble with that once before. So. <laughs> yeah, I had. Uh, I'm not even gonna talk about. No, you don't even talk. I can't about even it. talk about what I got in trouble. With. <laughs> <laughs> I have now signed an NDA, <laughs> and I am legally not allowed <laughs> to talk about it. Legally obligated to STFU. Okay, I will say this. We had a meeting with Tonnet. Me and Bo got exclusive uh, access to a new feature on their app, and we're currently testing well it. Well played. That's all I'm going to say. Well played. We could, uh, we'll test it tomorrow in the slingshot. Yeah. I won't tell how will you test it. Okay, moving on. Thank you, Tonnet, for sponsoring the show. Won't be able to do the show without you, Tonnet. Love you a long time. All right. So let's get into some details about the Pan America. Um, so I watched. About five of these Pan America videos. Uh, I recommend the two that I posted in the show notes uh, in the description. Uh, one of them is Revzilla. Our buddy Spurge uh, went out for the actual press they did event. Him dirty. They did the guy so dirty. And also, uh, guys, there are there was two types of events. There was a test ride that seemingly people could just come to that they flew a couple people out to, and then there was a press launch. The press launch. It was magazines and added camera vehicles and uh, road, dirt, all the whole thing. Yeah. The What do they call it where you stand behind the motorcycle with the stupid banner? Stand-ups or something like yeah. that? Yeah. It's so dumb. If you watch every one of the journalists, they all stand behind the little flowy Harley Davidson sign with a motorcycle in front of them. Yeah. They did our boys at Revzilla bad. If you guys go watch the video that we have linked Turn your volume down in the beginning because Spurge's audio is terrible. Like, like bad, bad. Like really bad. I had to like turn my audio down because it sounded so bad. I don't know what mic they had. I don't know why nobody was monitoring the freaking audio at a press <laughs> event. We do this for our stupid YouTube show. Like what are you guys doing? It's a press event. These are press. You're ruining the con. Anyway. I went on a tirade earlier. I, so I was his, shocked. A, aside from that, his information was vast and great. Spurge's video, dude, in ten minutes, he covered so much stuff. If you are gonna, if you guys are gonna watch any Pan America video, other than like deal with the first ten to fifteen seconds or whatever of audio, go watch Revzilla's first ride review. Spurge did a phenomenal job. Um, here's the the main points I took from that. Okay, so uh, Pan America, brand new. Got, there's two types of models. There's standard and special. Um, standard. <laughs> oh, God, what? Your freaking wife. Your laptop was dead. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Chase, calm down. Your laptop was dead when you started a live stream. You okay. got no room to talk, Listen, bug. babe, listen. <laughs> okay, we're not a multi-million dollar professional publication. And, and, and anyway... Wife roasted. All <laughs> we hashtag wife roasted in the chat, please. <laughs> oh my god, that please let that be a new thing. All right, so your takeaways from this. Let's uh, talk about like the cool parts, and I want to focus on just the special. Okay, all right. So yeah, um, let's just be clear. The standard nobody's going to talk about. The, the, nobody gives an absolute crap about the freaking uh, standard. We're only talking about the special during the show because the other one's not special. Moving on. Um, so let's see. We've got different mo We got five different rider modes. Um, there's three. The special gets three custom slots. So basically, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. You get, you know, you get your. Uh, I think it's four rider modes: rain road, sport, uh, off road slash plus. But then, well, so off road and off road plus are two different ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. it looks like the same one in the videos. No, no. It's okay, off -road so and off -road those are so you get five different modes, but then three customizable because obviously you can go in and dial in the traction control, whatever. By the way, has to have an IMU if it's able to do that. It does. Um, I like that it has linking brake system, so that way if you smash on the front brake. It's actually going to use the rear and the front uh, together. Yeah. Love that. Love the six axis IMU. Um, and all so, those all those settings can be individually defeated within the custom. Absolutely. Um, so there's a lot to talk about with the bike, but there are two main things to talk about. There's two big deals. One is the main thing. 
the bike has something called adaptive ride height control. <laughs> now, this cost a Short thousand. We. <laughs> this cost a thousand dollars on top of already buying the special. Can you figure out what the price difference between the special and the standard is? I don't think anybody's going to buy the standard unless they just can't afford the special. I know that the special is like right under twenty k. Right, yeah. So the special already comes in at twenty k. You have to spend a thousand dollars, but you get adaptive ride height control. What this does is when you slow down to a stop, it's got a uh, semi-active suspension. The motorcycle can change the suspension for you. You don't have to. The bike lowers the to seat, make it and easier. The seat height also lowers. The seat height low. No, there's two different types of seats. No, no. The seat height will lower as well when you come to a stop. No, that's what the, the suspension like comes down some. Suspension and seat height will come down. You're telling me that the seat is electronically controlled. Yorp. I will call bullcrap no, on no, you right it, now. No, no. It seriously is. That is one you of the find features. Me, you find me proof of that, and I will I will give that to you. Let's. So I know for a fact the suspension will bring you down when you come to a stop. And you're you have a lower seat height now. You can control the bike better. When you start going, the bike raises up. Motard Matt wrote it, and he said the seat moves. The seat moves, but is he saying? He said it's annoying. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, the seat moves. I'm I'm telling you, and and you didn't put it in the notes, but that that video that was my pick. Yeah. She mentions that as well, and how it moves when you start riding. The seat will come up, at, and if you ride fast, it'll come up fast. If you ride slow, it'll come up slow. Yes, but that's the suspension, not the seat. No, no, the seat will move. That's what that's what I'm saying. The seat will move. I don't believe any of okay, you. Okay, then don't. I don't because I no. I think people are saying the seat moves, nope. but it's literally the suspension. The, the seat moves. I, the seat, the seat moves, dude. It's it's that simple. <laughs> I don't think it's that simple. I think it's verbiage. I think this is a verbiage issue. Yeah. But whatever, I will gladly be proven wrong. Okay. Apparently, the seat moves. <laughs> Hell. Okay. A confidence you can feel by lowering seat height when stopped on their site. Boom. <laughs> Co-host roasted. <laughs> <laughs> Wife roasted, check. Co-host roasted, check. <laughs> Is there a chat roasted anywhere? <laughs> the chat's already been telling you, dude. I just, you can understand. Look, being somebody that works for me who talks terribly, can you understand that if somebody said the seat moves, they would be saying that meaning that the suspension is moving and the seat is the main thing that they feel under their butt. Can you understand what I'm saying? I mean, I get it, yeah, but you're okay. wrong. <laughs> oh, my God. Regardless, the seat height of the motorcycle apparently is suspension and seat hydraulic seat. Hydraulic? <laughs> well, how does the seat move, bro? How does it move? Is it hydraulics? Is I, it air? How I would does it assume move? it's electric. Okay, it's an electric. So there's an electric motor inside the seat. Yeah, I, I have to look at it. Oh, my good God. Yeah. Anyway. Height, the seat height changes. That's the main point. It's fancy. It costs a thousand freaking dollars. Good for you, Harley. It's probably going to be the most revolutionary thing you do on this bike. I know that it doesn't change the ground clearance when, uh, when just the seat moves. By the way, because that's one thing that she pointed out. I just that's the last thing I'll say about that. Goodbye, Bo. <laughs> you just said. Hold on. You just said the ground clearance doesn't change when just the seat moves. Yeah. That is the most no shit thing you've ever said in your life. If the seat, if it's just the seat that's pivoting up and down. Ground clearance is from the underneath of the bike to the ground. Yeah. Right. So if the seat moves. It, w that, that's what I'm that saying. The thing change. you said was so obvious. Like even yeah. I am an idiot and I understand. Okay. Okay. Anyway. The seat moves, the Whatever. suspension moves. <laughs> We're back to it. That means the ground clearance changes when the suspension changes when you come to a stop. When you roll the, off. The ground clearance does that, yes. Yes, and now when you roll off, everything kind of like raises up a little bit and you're off to the races. Uh, that's great for short people, gang. It is. I'm looking at you, short people, gang. I don't, I don't think that 
I don't think that short people will gravitate towards this as an entry into. You don't? Uh, no. Be- Wait, what? Because there's cheaper options that are sh- uh, short as well. Okay, we're gonna get into that. For- yeah. Let's. Let- I wanna. I wanna hit this other thing that I think is really freaking cool. Um, so there is a valve adjuster inside the bike. Hydraulic valve adjustment. And it makes it so th- you never have to get a valve adjustment. Unless that breaks. <laughs> that's a fair... Bro, I didn't think about that earlier. Yeah, I okay. bet you that's an expensive repair if that goes. So here's the thing. Uh, especially, like, you know, when we're talking about, like, Ducati, like, any bike, when you have to get a valve adjustment, we've watched Brian do valve adjustments here in the shop. They are not fun. They are... They are expensive, and it is not a good time. It has remained to be seen how. So yes, that is expensive, and I mean that is a, an extensive repair. But I can only imagine that repairing a hydraulic, like if something goes wrong with that, I bet you it's going to be infinitely more expensive than just getting valves done okay that's a fair point you know that I, mean? I didn't think about because it is a fairly complicated uh a system compared to its counterpart right i just think it's really cool though to even to include something like that in your engine i i've never heard of stuff like that you know we have uh ducati you know semi recently has been really pushing their uh what's it called their service intervals Mm -hmm. to way higher mileages because like back in the day like you'd have to ride a ducati for like a thousand miles and then boom you have a you have like a valve adjustment or something and and valve adjustments are not cheap they're like thousands of dollars so it's like hey thanks for tons of money for a motorcycle hope you uh ride it so you can spend tons of money more um so it's really cool to see them integrating this type of thing that really extends how long the bike can go Uh, i think that's pretty neat um so from watching Spurge's video, his main cons, from what I could understand, uh, the ground clearance isn't really enough to for it to be an actual adventure motorcycle. Uh, I don't really ride adventure motorcycles. I don't even know what distance there needed to be. I think um, that's a subjective con mm-hmm. because not everybody is going to be out there like hardcore enduro adventuring. He did. He did note that he doesn't think it has enough ground clearance for when you eventually get better at it. Because his his whole spiel was like, this was a great entry level to the adventure class, especially if you were a shorter rider. I, so, think, I think for most people that ride adventure bikes, ex- you know, aside from like the most uh, farkle, you know, flooded ADV bikes out there with the people who live in, in onesies, you know, like mm-hmm. those guys... Those very specific the, adventure they're not gonna, It's not going to be enough for them, but I do think that for most people on an ADV bike, a lot of them do a lot of highway miles and then some light to uh, like medium off-road stuff, and I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I, well, I think it's interesting that like every video that I watched, they all basically said that this seemed like a very good entry point into the adventure space. I think that Harley did that specifically because, one – there's no way Harley's going to compete with a GS. There's no way Harley's going to compete with a Multistrada. Like, these are bikes that have been in the market, are tried and true, and people are, like, hardcore into those motorcycles. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, I don't think they want to mess with those people. So I think they intentionally made an entry-level adventure bike with a massive engine. Um, so yeah, they, they did it because they know most of their – they they the buyers are going to be on the road going to those places i think so like you know bigger engine longer hauls you know more comfortable on the on the roads right but still capable enough to you know hit some dirt or some you know little off-road gravel some light rocks and stuff cuz he did take it through some like rocky stuff and said it was all right you know at certain speeds right but if you're making something, you know, with the adjustable ride height and all that kind of stuff, if you're making something for beginner adventure riders, they're probably not going to go do crazy shit off-road. You know what I mean? Yeah. When you're in, when you're int- getting into the adventure space, the first thing you have to deal with is how large those motorcycles are. Yeah. 
like they don't feel like it when you ride. If you guys have never ridden an adventure bike, I've never ridden a GS. The freaking GS is huge. <laughs> no, it's massive. <laughs> I have ridden a Multistrada that looks huge, feels huge while you're riding it, but or it, it looks huge while you're riding it, but it, it doesn't really feel that huge. Um, and then you know the Africa Twin, the V Strom, like these are these are pretty big motorcycles. So that's the kind of the first thing you have to overcome when you start that. So I do think you know they've they've made a compelling argument to have a motorcycle in the entry level of that class. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I think, I think that, like I said earlier, that this is less about the bike. It's more to me. It looks more like a way to get a lot of attention on, on the tech and the motor. Like, like this is a good way of them saying, "Hey, look what we can do," and then once they get the excitement and the kind of hype about it, then they can start introducing all that cool stuff into their other lineups. Do you think they're going to move this motor to other cruisers? I 100% would expect them to update the Sportster line, if not with this, then a derivative of this. Well, so here's the thing that I think, I don't think they're going to do that, honestly, because when I was watching these videos about these guys on the bikes, I don't know if you heard that, heard this with other people that you watched, because I don't know what videos you watched, but supposedly the bike likes to rev. Yeah. Are yeah. there cruisers that have high rev? So typically, for you guys the that Challenger? aren't really updated, the Challenger? The Challenger likes to rev. Um, there's uh, there's a couple others that... Um, I don't associate mostly cruisers. Mostly Japanese cruisers oh, okay. uh, that like to rev. So like, like the Rebel, hypothetically, would. The Rebel would... Um, from what I understand, it really likes t to rev comparative to other beach winds. Yeah. Um, I just don't think of a high revving engine, not high revving. Like we're not talking like yeah, 12,000, 15,000. We're talking, you know, like um, it any gets of the, going any at of like the six parallel or seven. twins would be like, I, huh. which I think the, I think the rebel is a parallel. I don't know. I think I'd have to look that again. I haven't looked much into the, the, the rep, the new rebel. I just feel like it's a it's an interesting engine that mm. it 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 doesn't seem like it would go in a cruiser platform yeah. based on the way like I was watching Blockhead's video and just like the way he was riding it when it it's you know it's like a super sport it's like lugging down low and hard to get going and then middle of the way it starts getting getting there and then high up in the revs it really likes to go I think it's a perfect can cuz if you put that motor in a lighter frame like a Sportster then I think that th that that would offset some of the lugging. Like you would be, it'd be a little less boggy because it wouldn't be pulling as much weight. Yeah. And you know, the the trick to Harley motors is they like to overcome like the Camelback, which is when your torque and your horsepower just don't ever meet. <laughs> and okay. You're, you're chasing your horsepower basically. Uh, right. The way they get over that is with displacement or lightening the load. So more more of a power to weight ratio. That's the way they get around that, right? I think that the sports would be a perfect uh, candidate for this kind of motor, and I'm I'm hoping that's what they do because it's the last one that needs an update. A sportster, yeah, interesting. I don't know anything about the cruiser, so I can't really like. Uh, I don't even know what a sportster looks like. Um, it looks kind of like the Bolt. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could see that then. So it's peanut so, tank, like you know. Well, so how does your bolt run? Is it like revving, or is it like low down torquey? A, there is a a dip in it. It is very torquey, and then it's got a dip where you're chasing it, and then you just lose horsepower at the end. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, that thing. I mean, it's anemic at at high speeds. At what speed do you think it gets to that point of like like 60, 60 to seventy miles an hour is when I start feeling the drop off oh God. of power, but not in it's like a it's like a curve. So then when I'm up at like eighty or ninety, but it's not. It's I mean it'll it'll increase, but I it takes me a while to get to like one ten. <laughs> I'm very interested to ride your bolt now because that <laughs> seems strange. Yeah, but it, it, you can bog it down. You can put it in third gear from you know five miles an hour and just honk on it, and it'll it'll go. See, this is one of the situations where I need more experience on a cruiser. Um, so I did want to show you guys. Uh, we were doing a first ride of a Ducati Street Fighter the other day, which is going to be a glorious video. It'll come out next Friday. I'm very excited about it. 
Um, but when uh, Luke was getting some of the uh, B-roll shots of the bike, Brian and I were walking around mountain. And, uh, Bo, if you could show my screen real quick. This is a Suzuki V-Strom. <laughs> no, it's not. It's <laughs> Don't be confused. It's not a Harley Davidson Pan America. It is a white, orange, and black adventure motorcycle made by Suzuki. I will now like to show you the Pan America. <laughs> Let's go back. The V-Strom. They literally switched out orange for white and even have the front headlight has the no, bar that thing. V, that V-Strom is a fake Ducati. <laughs> I'm not going to say... That's a straight fake Ducati. It like, does like, look like a fake no, Ducati. It, it, if you look at the, look at the freaking... Uh, the, uh, uh, the logo on the side of it and where it is and then on the side of the tank that's just like it <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> it's, it's, so, a, it's a fake multistrada i'm not saying that suzuki's trying to mess with harley but those just i think the only thing that harley has to worry about is the bmw the bmw gs yeah that's its, i think that's its its biggest competition really so this is a GS, guys. Just for you guys that don't know, a base model GS is eighteen grand. Yo, bro, I had no idea you could get into a GS for that cheap. A twelve hundred. I mean, yeah, yeah, I did not know this. Well, I mean, you look at the uh, the Pan America Special Edition is like what twenty, like right under twenty k, and that's with all that crazy stuff aside from like when it, the big option for the right. So if you guys that don't know the GS, that this thing, this, I don't think I'm crazy saying that this is the king of adventure bikes. Like when people generally think of adventure bikes, this is the motorcycle they're thinking about. Yeah, BMW's up there, and then, um, what's the Multistrada start at? I don't know. I'm gonna take it off your screen so nobody sees what crazy weird shit you look at. Yeah, G GS being you know, motorcycle things. No, no. Don't show them the motorcycle things that I have to look at all the time. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of people are mentioning the Sportster line is is dead in EU, the EU, and this is because the the Sportster line is what is like dead in the EU, and uh -oh. it's because of that that motor they've been using. From what I was reading, uh, it, had, it gets like extra tariffs or something on it because it won't pass certain like emission standards over oh. there. Which again is uh, uh, for in my opinion another reason why it would be a good candidate for a new motor. And they and they have been updating the lines and consolidating because they got rid of the Dyna and then absorbed basically name only into the Softail line. So it would be a move that they would do, at least at, in my opinion. I think so. Um, actually, this is the 950. We got seven minutes just by. By the way, seven minutes. Yeah. Oh, how does time do this to us each time? So look, that thing is yeah. So this is the older Multistrada. I don't know why. Like, I want the new one. So if you guys don't know, uh, Ducati is now doing a V4 Multistrada. Ah, here we go. This is That's, what we need. They got rid of the Desmo. Yep. Desmo Drone yeah. or Desmo something something. Whatever. <laughs> the Some, Desmo something something. This is a Desmo thing. Luke just uh, he just sighed <laughs> somewhere <laughs> out did. there. He did. He did. Okay, we've got, uh, like, what are we looking at? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's the that's the price I was expecting. 22 I'm trying to find a comparable. Okay, you can get a Duke, you can get a Multistrada V4 for 19.9. Yeah. This is what I was wanting to see. Okay, can I go into this? Let me see it. So this would be price-wise the competition for the special then. Yeah. Because you can either get a Ducati Multistrada V4 or a Harley Davidson Pan America. Now I don't know, dude. What are the stats, Bo, on the... What's the power and the torque on the Pan America? You uh, 94 foot-pounds, and I think... Uh, da -da. So we've got 92 foot-pounds torque on the multi. 150 uh, horsepower. And we've got 170 horsepower. So we're looking very close. They're at like 6, 7K is where their, like, their max power is. Right. Interesting. So... The Pan America is a direct competitor to the Multi V4 then. Dude, that Multi V4 engine is phenomenal. It, yeah. you, that Pan America has to be so good 
to even get close to competing with this because price wise it's directly competing with it. And that's before you spend the a thousand dollars on the adjustable ride height thing. Mm. Yeah, paying extra for that I think is this how I feel about the um the ride command on all of the Indians. Yeah. Is like paying paying extra money to have something that every line should have. Well, like the thing that Harley Okay. Let me just let me wrangle in my thoughts. <laughs> okay, put yourself in these shoes, Bo, if you will for a moment. Okay. You're Harley Davidson. Your brand sucks. <laughs> right? You're trying your best to do anything you can to save your company. You want to grab a new segment of people, right? You're going to offer this crazy new motorcycle that everybody's going to be talking about. You are going to have this thing in your motorcycle that's brand new, that's never been seen before. And then, right when you launch it, in a motorcycle that is pound for pound, dollar for dollar, horsepower for horsepower, it is competing with a Ducati Multistrada V4. Yeah. And then, right before somebody says, you know what, let me try Harley because they've got this fancy new thing. You come up to them and you say, I'm going to need another $1,000. I'm going to need another $1,000, Bo. No, wouldn't do it. A Multistrada or this weird thing Harley's making. What? <sighs> yeah, they should definitely have have it included in the price and like take the hit yeah, take the hit take the dollar hit convert people yeah. on a a phenomenal value yeah i was here for Man, the pan money america for value is like the big thing like that like to to me and like they hit a lot of of check marks for money for value on this and it was just like at the last minute they were like oh yeah but all this i'm gonna be honest guys before i looked at the gs and the multistrada i thought that nineteen nine 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 for a Pan America was a decent price. Now that you're telling me that I can get a BMW twelve fifty GS, or I can get a Multistrada V four, there is no chance in hell I'm getting a Pan America. Do you love how this is happening three minutes before the show's over? Yeah. Yeah. What? No. This isn't as, I will say, this is not as bad as the live wire where you're like, hey, Zero's doing some stuff. We'll charge 10000 over what they're doing and it'll be an inferior product. It's not that. But who, who do you think you are to come into a space that is dominated by a few motorcycles and think you can do that? I'm shocked. Yeah, I do agree the Pan Am, to me, and this is a subjective thing. I think the Pan America looks better than those ADV bikes because they all kind of look the same. No, that's fine. Yeah, no, no. I'm. I, that's I, looks... and they have a lot of cool stuff in there that that makes it worth the money. Like what? Like, like the you look at the way that they're a, a, attacking the the platform and you're talking about the adventure space. The adventure space, and this is more of a of a way to do beginner and intermediate. There's a lot of focus on, on a lot of those aids and stuff like that to help out. But the engine itself, the IMU, all the lean, like the length braking was another thing that was on there that I thought that was is, really that cool. That is cool, yeah. Right, and the ability to completely defeat all of those and make your own custom settings. Like, it's pretty cool. I don't know what the BMW has because we haven't looked at it, but... I mean that's a pretty good value, especially from a brand who's notorious for overpricing their their bikes. So I, I do want to make a point. Somebody in the comments brought up that I'm comparing the special Pan America to the base model V4 mm -hmm. uh, Multistrada. That is a good point. Yeah. Um, what is the price for the? I don't know, but we have one minute to find out, <laughs> and we have to do that L2W. Twenty twenty four. Twenty four and a half, twenty four six. That's a lot. I don't even. I don't know what the the very differences are because there's also a sport model. So I yeah. I'm not I'm not educated enough to go through the v, the multi stratas. But I'm so, going to be honest. Uh, apparently, the GS doesn't come with bells and whistles, and they're twenty five with all the bells and whistles. 
I don't know, man. Yeah. So it's a it's an unusually competitively priced full featured ADV bike. So they priced out their top of the line to be the price of the base model other guys, basically. Yeah. It looks like it. I don't know. <sighs> All right. What you, a strange place do to Do you want to handle the um the L two W? Yeah, I'll look through the L2W. Guys, that we're we're out of time. I I have a lot of thoughts. I'm going to pause on those thoughts. Uh you guys give me a second. I am going to check on Tonnet. I'm going to find out who I think is deserving of our $50 gift card. I am I got to save it. I'm just going to I'm going to be done here. All right. Check on Tonnet. Going to my club on two wheels. Um Let's see. Five point seven goat. I own a Ducati, and I know Desmo service is expensive, so no valve adjustment is awesome too. I don't think the hydraulic valves will be a problem. Every car you have ever owned probably had them. Really? So that's not new tech. I'll have to look into that. That would be interesting. Uh, five point seven goat. Watch out for Bo sending you a message. Thank you for giving that info. Um. Valve adjustments, yeah, not anything serious. But ironically, while we're on this multi-strata thing, first valve clearance check, 36,000 miles. Sorry, that, that, that frappuccino almost killed me. <laughs> 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 My bladder's about to explode. I'm sorry. Also, well, you're I want to clarify something to everybody because there is a lot of conversation in the chat. When we're talking about all this stuff... We are talking about it from like two non like mechanical technical guys, and mm -hmm. we are basing everything that we are saying and talking about and having a conversation because this is a natural kind of conversation that me and Chase have all the time. Yeah, we're just, just on, doing it on live. what we're reading and what we're hearing and videos that we're hearing. So feel free to like talk about like the actual like. There's some really good conversation happening in the chat about like all this. Like Jake's bringing, he's got a lot more like mechanical knowledge about this kind of stuff. Right. And so like clear set the record straight. Like if we're not saying something correctly or we're misinformed, we can only operate under <laughs> the information that we have. Dare I say the the chat is about half of what this conversation is. Yeah. Half of it is me and Bo just talking back and forth, but y'all's chat information is just as important as the stuff yeah. we're saying. So 100%. oh by the way, Bo over on Tonnet, uh yeah. five point seven goat. Uh, get his info. Um, he says that the hydraulic valve thing, most cars have that. Yeah, that's what Jake was saying too. And uh, I, I'm curious if if that's been done in a motorcycle in that way. Because uh, Jake was saying that they've had hydraulic lifters in Harleys, which makes sense. Okay. But is, is it the same system? Is it like hydraulic lifters or is hydraulic valves like a new system that they're introducing with this motor yeah we need to do more info on it we, we don't have the time yeah. today but we should definitely do it in a future yeah. episode um so let me you said what was his name 5.7 goat um but yeah guys uh you guys here in the chat are a huge part of the live show i mean yeah, that's dude. that's the entire reason we do this thing live so you guys can chat so we can talk back and forth it's it's a big conversation and if we bring it back to the roots of the show that's why we do the show Oh, he is. Oh well, that's what happens when you're. Uh, that's what. The <laughs> there you go. Two, <laughs> one winner each week. <laughs> this is a good point. If you're active over on Tonnet, you win stuff, man. Yeah. Whether you have before or not, you win stuff. Um, so yeah, but you guys always comment in the chat. We love you guys over there. Uh, yeah, and dude. make sure if you want to comment on the YouTube video when this goes live. I don't know how. The chat goes into the comments. I'm not really sure how that works. It so doesn't go into comments, but it does a replay on the side. Gotcha. So if you guys want to take the information you learned from this, whenever this is an actual live video, by all means, uh, hit a comment uh, up from what you learned in here. Anybody yeah. that uh, helps out with the information, we you guys are We just a bunch awesome. of dummies. Make us smart. Yeah, man. We're just having a conversation. That's why we're live, so we can have a conversation with you yeah, guys. So this is like less of an informative thing and then more of an excuse for me and Chase to like shoot the shit. Uh, th honestly, <laughs> you know well, no, I mean? it, the whole the whole thing was like, hey, let's come up with something to where it's, you know, all of the content we make is so serious. We have to we have to do so much research ahead well, of time. <laughs> not serious, but you know what I mean. I um, I uh, I submit exhibit A in the instant go to video. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, well, that's fair. But no, getting that video out and making it the way we wanted it to takes a lot of time. This is is a more like down to earth like hey let's just let's just talk with buddies and you guys are one of our buddies so we appreciate it. Yeah. Um if you guys are watching make sure to hit the like button. Love you guys long time for doing that. And um if you want to listen to this, it's available on Apple Podcasts. It's available on Spotify. It's available a Babel on a Babel. Uh, Google Podcast. Um and we would love you to rate it on Apple Podcasts. Colt can ride real you. quick before we leave. Colt can ride can ask, is there a first ride on the Pan America? And I would love to say yes. And if there was ever a brand, if there Harley, if there if you're out there, if there was ever a, a bike that would get into this channel, it would be the Pan America. All I'm saying, Harley, if you're watching this, I would love truly not talking shit. Even though I love the Multistrada, I would love to ride your motorcycle yes. and test it out authentically and give my own opinion. I don't know anybody that has ridden more motorcycles than I have, in at least in my group of people. I have a lot of experience on a lot of motorcycles, and I would love to give your bike a fair shake. Yep. It would take us two days to film it, and it would be a phenomenal video. Plus, if I could like squeeze a, a road glide in there somewhere, I wouldn't. Oh be mad my at god! It. You okay, would... that good. That's all it right. For us. So that's the end of the show. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, that's it for us. Thank you guys for watching live on Two Wheels Number Nine. Another heads up: next week we are here live on Friday, same time, same place, different day. Uh, we'll see you guys next Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We look forward to ending out the week with you guys, and we'll find out if other bikes have had variable valve timing or whatever the hell that stuff is called. All right, guys. Bye. Also, the Pan America seat does not move. I Okay. Well, it says on there.